Hi, in this video, I'll talk about how to recognize a conic section when the equation is not written in standard form. Here are the standard forms of the conic sections, the parabola, the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. The four standard forms are a little too busy and uh, hard to remember. So I suggest that you use what I call the prototypes instead. Here are the prototypes basically centered at zero comma zero. If you want to center it somewhere else at some other h comma k, just replace x with x minus h and y with y minus k. If the question is given to you in standard form, then it should be straightforward if you know the forms. You look at this equation and you recognize that it's a standard form of a circle. The center is at two comma one, and the radius is equal to the square root of one nine fourth or three halves. But what if the equation is not given in standard form? Let's take the same equation. If I expand the squares and combine like terms and multiply both sides by four, the equation is not recognizable anymore. If this new non-standard form is given in the question, how would you answer? One thing you can do is use completing the square to convert back to standard form and give a full answer. What I'm showing you in this video is a shortcut that allows you to know the form of the conic. What kind is it? Is it a parabola or a circle or an ellipse or a hyperbola? This shortcut won't give you all the details. If you want to know all the details, you still have to complete the square, but it will give you the form of the conic. The rules will be based on the prototypes. Notice that in these cases, except for the parabola, the variables are all on one side. So the first step in this shortcut is to move all the variables to the same side. And once you've done that, what you do is look at the squared terms. If only one variable is squared, it's a parabola. The variable that's not squared is parallel to the axis. If both variables are squared, and they have the same sign and the same coefficient, it's a circle. If both variables are squared and they have the same sign but different coefficients, it's an ellipse. If both variables are squared and they have opposite signs, it's a hyperbola. There we go. Your secret weapon is here in this table. Let's go back to the previous example. Identify this conic section. 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 4x minus 2y minus 11 equals 0. It's not in standard form, so I can't just compare it with my table of standard forms. So I'm going to have to use the non-standard form method. All these variables are already on one side, so I don't need to move them. Both x and y are squared. Their coefficients have the same sign, same coefficient. So that makes it a circle. And here it is on Desmos. Next example. Identify the conic section 7x squared plus 3y minus 4x plus 11 third equals 0. All the variables are already on one side, so I don't need to move anything. Only x is squared, y is not. So it's a parabola with an axis along the y direction, so it's vertical. Here it is on Desmos. Note that the uh, standard form of the parabola doesn't have the variables on the same side, but that doesn't matter. We're only checking that the equation has only one square term, so it really doesn't matter where the variables are. All right, for most purposes, this is good enough. So for many people, you can just stop watching the video now. I'm gonna go on and go one level harder. I'm gonna talk more about the ellipse and the hyperbola. Let's take this ellipse. It has a major axis on X and a minor axis on Y. In standard form, we can figure this out because the denominator of X is larger than the denominator of Y. But how would we figure this out when in non-standard form? You can think of the equation as one ninth as a coefficient times x squared plus one fourth times y squared equals one. 
Or you can also rewrite it after multiplying both sides by 36 as 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. Either way, notice this. The variable that's multiplied by the smaller coefficient tells you where the major axis is. That is because being divided by a larger denominator means you're being multiplied by the smaller fraction. One ninth is a smaller fraction than one fourth. If you multiply both sides by 36, you get the coefficient of four smaller than the coefficient of nine. So large denominator, small fraction, small coefficient, major axis. Or you can go the other way around, small coefficient, large denominator, major axis. Here's an example. 4x squared plus y squared minus 3x minus 7 equals 0. Both variables are squared, same sign, different coefficients, makes it an ellipse. Now for more details. y squared has the smaller coefficient, meaning in standard form it would have the larger denominator. So that makes it the major axis. The major axis is vertical along the y direction. Sure enough, here's the graph from Desmos. Now moving on to the hyperbola. Let's take this equation, both squared opposite signs that makes it a hyperbola. It has a transverse axis on X and a conjugate axis on Y. I like to think of the conjugate axis as the empty space. The transverse axis intersects the graph, the conjugate axis doesn't intersect anything and it's just empty space. With the standard form, the transverse axis goes with the positive coefficient and the conjugate axis or the empty space goes with the negative coefficient. The positive intersects the graph, the negative doesn't. That's the rule. And I can use that for my non-standard form as well. But first, I need to make my non-standard form come close to the standard form. And the standard form has a constant one by itself on one side. So I need to do that on my non-standard form. First, I isolate the constant to the other side and make sure it's positive. We're trying to make it look like the number one, positive one in the standard form. If necessary, multiply both sides by negative one to make the constant positive. Once you've done that, the squared variable with positive coefficient is parallel to the transverse. Whereas the squared variable with the negative coefficient is parallel to the conjugate or the empty space. Let's take an example. 3x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 4y squared minus 2y. The variables are not on the same side, so first I move them to the same side. Both variables are squared for opposite signs, so it's a hyperbola. Now, let's say I want to know some more details about this hyperbola. I move the constant to the other side, and it's positive, so I'm good. I see that x squared has a positive coefficient, and y squared has a negative coefficient. Therefore, the transverse axis is along the x direction or horizontal, and the conjugate axis is along the y direction or vertical. And the Desmos graph bears it out. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye.